Hello everyone, it's me Christopher Kane and I'm an aerospace engineering student here at Politecnico di Milano and in this video I'm gonna teach you how to build a rocket. It's actually a series of video, it's going to be around like 12 videos or dozen videos about like the whole process from designing actually from target decision which is going to be this video up until of course launch so stay tuned um, yeah I'd say let's jump right in okay little change of location we are actually now going to determine what kind of rocket we are going to make a little premise before of course budget is an important factor you have to consider as with most endeavors building rocket um, it's not going to change the fact that you're going to need money for this uh, actually I already made a project like this, it was awarded at Maker Faire, it was awarded in many cases, and in that case I used several thousands of euros. It's really not needed, uh, you don't need to uh, actually go so high, but that took a lot of research, I've been working on it for more than four years, which is also the reason why I'm making these videos. I am happy to share the knowledge that I gained in these years with you and also save you time and of course money. Uh, but like just as a rule of thumb, uh, we are going to range from a couple hundreds to uh, again several thousands if you really want to make the things good, if you really want to make research, test everything, make everything for by yourself and everything. But if you buy stuff online, if you're just going to assemble a thing, it's probably going to be like I guess 300, 400 euros. So it's not cheap, it's not expensive. I mean, it really depends on your possibilities. But uh, probably the highest impact is on the electronics. If you're going to have multiple versions, and I, like, I think I arrived to the sixth iteration for just the uh, avionics on board. Also, you have ground pod, uh, you have launch pod, you have uh, ground station, you have many more things. You don't need them again. If you want to make those fancy stuff, that's just more. It's going to cost you more, but at the end of the day, you could really even just use a uh, proto board uh, and just stick with it. If you want to make, I don't know, a PCB designed with your name on it, with everything perfect, everything fine, etc., it's of course going to cost a little, especially because most of the PCB uh, companies that are in China, and even if the price of the PCB is often even zero, uh, for example, with Next PCB, Open PCB, and stuff like that you are going to pay a little on the shipment. So that was just the premise. We can now jump on the actual decision of the rocket, but that's important because uh, I want to be real clear. It's not easy. Uh, it's so much time consuming and eventually also cost uh, consuming. We are now on uh, Na Richard Nakel Rocketry uh, website. Uh, this is really probably the pioneer of rocketry. Like, he is the rocketry uh, word. Here you can basically find everything on on the topic, and by everything I mean like from generic stuff to uh, specification of motors, propellants, testing rockets, everything technical, but also miscellaneous, and of course theory, which is uh, I know it's a bummer, but guys, really these are most of them are just PDFs. There are also sub pages of this website. Just go in there, learn, understand what actually mean, what it actually mean to build rocket. And like, I don't know, spend two days on this one and then decide what kind of rocket you want to make. Because this is really, I, I, I don't even know how to highlight the fact that this is really important to understand because this is going to save you a ton of time in the actual uh, prototyping and building process. But right now, I'm interested in the rocketry softwares, we can find it in general here, rocketry software, and we are going to look at some of these uh, softwares. Uh, in this case, uh, we are specifically going to use Meteor, which is a Java implementation of a software, which was actually an Excel table shared online here is the SRM, which is way uh, older than Meteor. I, I guess Meteor was like two years ago. Um, from Jordan Content and Shabon Bees. I don't know if the pronunciation are right. Anyway, uh, we are going to use these softwares if we decide to actually also build our own motors, which was, for example, my case. 
if you are from, I don't know, if you're from the United States, you're lucky as fuck because you have Apogee components, you have many websites where you can just uh, find material, buy, and, and it's easy. In Europe, it's way harder than that and you're probably not going to find high performance motors. So uh, I know a lot of people uh, decided to build their motors. Me, I decided to build my own motors as well, but that's going to take a lot of research, a lot of time and a lot of money as well. So uh, just to be clear, decide before and and then apply. But in case you want to uh, build your motors, this website is so useful because it allows you to basically, uh, let's try it just very quickly. Uh, you're not going to see everything here. You can see everything tested. I, I just typed in random numbers. This is just an example. And as you can see, a motor that has moon blur in here, brain out, outer diameter 29, brain segment length of 150 millimeters. This is really just like the real units. Uh, you can find here the table and first time max thrust of limples, etc. Now we have a 1.34 seconds of thrust time. Uh, I mean, it's nor good nor bad, but it's not the most efficient way to actually build TBC rockets. One thing that I cannot uh, stress enough is that we have a TBC rocket motor. It means thrust vector controlled rocket, which basically means that as long as we have thrust, we have control. The moment we don't have thrust anymore, we don't have control. So the longer... The, the higher trust time we have, the more control we have. And basically, we are not aiming to have like a huge flight altitude. You can just go and build a non TVC rocket motor. You can, a rocket, you can just build, I don't know, a normal rocket, like a passively stabilized rocket, which is also going to cost you probably like 20 bucks. It's cool, but it's not that cool. Um, in this case, we want at least like, seven to eight seconds of thrust time and we don't need to go so high probably 50 meter top uh 50 meter top means we don't need to have like a high impulse or something like that we're gonna have probably a rocket within 1.5 kilogram to maximum two kilograms and you see max thrust here is good also the thrust is going is increasing uh which is funny, but also you can see the trust is not really stable. So we don't really like this kind of uh, configurations. We would probably spend a little time here to configure the motor. We are probably going to like move those factors in order to have this kind of uh, thrust curve, you know? So a little spike and then we want an average, we, we want a, a stable rocket and, and then it just pulls down. This is, for example, an F10, an F15, actually, an S F15. Uh, you can find it online if you are a US citizen. Uh, it's way harder to find online if you're not. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not easy to source. You're probably going to consider building. Or if you're from, you know, like, you know, Europe, uh, you can only find smaller rockets, mo rocket motors. Uh, which means you would probably also consider using um, clusters. So basically, instead of using one big, you're going to use four little motors, which are is like easily um, sourceable even here in Europe. Now let's move on the actual dimensions, which I know you're interested in, um, and I, I know probably a lot of people are telling you to just stick with the and normal dimensions because it's going to be easier and everything and by normal dimensions I mean uh, usually three inches uh, but if you're not American uh, it's probably going to be hard to find 76 millimeters uh, tubes uh, so what I really suggest to you is to go and shop for the local markets for hardware stores find uh, all the opportunities or even like consider making the whole rocket 3D printed so that you can basically just decide by yourself the dimensions. But like if you want to have um, standard version, so using, I don't know, um, PVC, which 
I don't really suggest it's a little heavy cardboard or carbon fiber. Just go and search in your country, in your city, in your location, like local area for hardware stores where you can find usually tubes. And if you find one, even if it's not 76 millimeters or three inches, but it's maybe a little bigger or smaller, just stick with it and then uh, make everything else based on that dimension. And uh, basically, now we are going to use um, this software, it's called Open Rocket, to decide whether the rocket is actually doable or not, if it's going to be stable or not. Uh, and so we're just going to download it in the my moment, like my time is the V2022. I already downloaded, but anyway, you just click here, decide whether you have Windows, Max, Linux, or whatever. Uh, you decide which one to download and just use it. So uh, I'm not really going into details because internet is full of videos explaining Open Rocket. Actually, it's also uh, pretty easy to understand by yourself. You can just play with it, and I mean it's fun. So uh, you can determine all the parameters. So the the thing that I want to stress is just find uh, the right components, find the available components, because otherwise you're going to spend more on shipment from United States for just, you know, a, a piece of paper. If we go on Apogee components, you're going to spend $13 for a body tube, but then you're going to spend like five times that price for the shipment to your country. If there is even a shipment to your country. So just go on eBay, just go on AliExpress, just go on local shops, select stuff that you can easily source and use those dimensions or just 3D print it yourself. So this is the important thing. As a rule of thumb, you should be, you know, from 45 millimeters up until like up to 10 millimeters. So that's the range of diameter and like range of, uh, you know, altitude. You, you can just go from like 50 to a meter and a half. So that's your range. It really depends on what you want to do. If you want it bigger to just flex it with your friends, or if you want maybe a finer, smaller thing uh, to challenge yourself even more, because that's going to be more difficult to tune, more difficult to find components that are right. And you know, to uh, find way to come down to less uh, weight and stuff like that. So of course, a little weight uh, added to a smaller rocket is going to impact it even more than just like three grams on a meter and a half rocket. So that that's the rule. Uh, these are the general dimensions you should go for. And of course you should consider uh, the kind of motor that you're going to use. If you're using just one single motor that you buy online from maybe Apogee components because you're like and you live in the United States, uh, you're probably good to go with um, a 38 millimeters or, you know, those kinds of motors. If you're from Europe or other countries and you need for example to have a cluster you're going to probably want a bigger uh, diameter uh, rocket tube because it's easier to fit more motors inside that that's you know just be logic with that and at the end of the day this stage is pretty easy uh, it's gonna get harder the more we get into details so in the next video uh, we are going to search for a uh, specific dimension and we are going to actually start designing our rocket on Fusion 360, which is uh, CAD software. So just to prepare yourself for the next time, Fusion 360 is a free software if you use uh, is it a hobbyist or as a student. So make sure to download it for the next time so that you're already going to be prepared for the next time. And yeah, that's it. So try to decide what dimensions are good, try to decide uh, what's achievable, what's sourceable uh, in your area and stick with it. Just don't let other people, other channels, other contents on the internet influence your ability to decide. I mean, at the end of the day, you're a maker, you can just make it fit. And yep, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, again, go on Naka Rocketry, learn about uh, rocketry in general, learn about all the principles and learn about the software that is suggesting. Uh, if you want to make your own motors, Meteor is a, the right tool. And generally, 
If you want to understand a little more about the aerodynamics of the rocket, if you want to understand how stable it's going to be without fins and, and everything else, just use Open Rocket, which is a great tool, free online, open source, and and yeah, that's that's really easy. Uh, this dash, it's all free, so make sure to uh, make sure to enjoy it as as long as it lasts. And yeah, bye. Almost forgot to ask you for subscribers and like. No, I'm joking, but um, I'm, this channel is an early stage. I really want to make this channel grow. So if you can support me with a like, with a subscription, I know it's free for you, but it really supports me. And I mean, I'm not asking you for money yet, maybe, uh, but that that's free for you and it makes me happy. So like, if you want this series to continue, make your part and, and yeah. See you next time.